Hello guys and welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be showing you two methods for adding fake camera movement into your shots. The first method we're going to use is we're going to use the shake effect. So simply drag your footage into the edited timeline and then once you've done that all you have to do is search up in your effects panel for the shake effect and it's on the grunge. So just drag it directly onto your video and immediately we just are able to play it back like so and uh, we're, we're able to play back the footage and now it's shaky rather than the footage before which wasn't shaky. So now we can go and fine tune our shake. If we open up our shake in our controls panel then we can first see the amount of shake and if we just drag that all the way up then we can see that there's just an absolute ton of shake and there are some weird other things on the side but we'll get to that later. So what else we have is the speed, so the speed of the shake. So the speed of the shake is pretty much how fast it goes through the shake. I wouldn't set it to something under 1 because then you can see individually where it's moving from place to place rather than getting a, you know, a real nice shake. There's also the seed. Now the seed is pretty much a random generator for the movement of the shake that you're going to get. So you can set it to pretty much anything you want. But what a seed is useful for is that if you have two shakes and you don't want them to look the same, you can set them to different seeds and that way they won't look the same at all. You've also got smooth, which smooths out the motion of your shake. And you've also got scale, which pretty much scales your video in. But we'll get to the use of this later. If we go down to individual controls, we can control the amount of X shake and Y shake. For those of you that don't know, X is the horizontal plane and Y is the vertical plane. So you can control how much shake you want to be on each axis. For example, now we're only shaking it up and down on that vertical plane. You can also set the amount of tilt shake or pretty much rotational shake in your shot. You've also got some cool things in Fractal as well, but you probably don't need to know about this for now. Now if we go down to our motion blur here, um, we can notice that um, it should automatically add motion blur, but it doesn't. And you can see that as it shakes around, it's actually quite jittery in the way it moves. There's no motion blur like it should be in real life. And the reason being is because we're not in a composite shot. If we just go and create a composite shot, and now we've got the unshaky footage, and if we just add the shake effect, then we can see that now we do have motion blur. If we go down into our controls tab here, we boost the amount, we can see that we do have motion blur. If you want to have motion blur, you've got to do your shake effect in a composite shot. And uh, motion blur is highly recommended because motion blur may really makes it look real compared to it making look jittery and computer generated. Now we've also got rack, and this is also very very important. If we go and set the amount way up, we can see that here we have a line between this is where the original um, comp was, the original video, and this is where it has to fill in. So what it's done is it's just reflected it along this plane here. If we go and set the X and Y to none, then we can see that this is what our original footage looks like when it's being shaked around. We can't use this as a final product though, because we've got all of this blank stuff around here. So what HitFilm does is it gives you options to wrap around it. You can either tile the footage to um, make it fit in like so, or you can reflect the footage which makes it look slightly better. But this isn't perfectly realistic because it will never really be reflected. So if you want to get a really really accurate um, shake then you have to set the X and the Y values to none. And that way we're left with this. If I just turn the shake down a bit, we're left with this. But what we can do now is use the scale to zoom in a bit. And this way We've zoomed in so that the shake only moves around and we can only see the actual video. And the downside to having such an effect like this is that we don't get to see the whole thing. But on the plus side, we do have the shake and it is 100% realistic. The more shake you have, then the more you'll have to zoom in before you start seeing errors popping up, like so. You can also do a bit of a mix of these. So for example, I might want to zoom out a bit, that way you can see errors, but I'm just going to reflect it now. So 
I'm using a mix between the scale and the reflection to create a more realistic, um, yet also um, enables us to go a bit wider than we normally would. So that is pretty much the first method of how to shape your video, and that's to use the shake effect. Now we're going to look at how we can use tracking and actual real footage uh, to create a more realistic shake. So what I'm going to do is just simply delete this shake, and then if we go into our media panel, not only do I have this video, but I've got this video. And as we can go through it, you can see there are two green points which I've stuck to this beige wall. And I've simply shaken my camera around um, so that um, it gives the movement. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag it on the top of this layer. It's not quite as long as the original. But what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go into the first frame. And then what I'm going to do is just open up this layer. And we're just going to, in the track section, we're going to hit the plus button. If you can't see it, you may need to extend it out like so. I'm just going to go into the compositing workspace like so. In Windows, there's a small button over here that you can press to go into compositing workspace. So go into your track panel now. And if we go into our layer, then we should be able to see that we've got this tracking point here. The advantage to doing it this method is that you have a more accurate, more realistic shaking movement, and you can also um, set how much shakiness you want it to be. So if you want it really shaky, you can do that. Um, if you want it to be less shaky, you can also do that. So this works really well. I can also do two points of tracking. Two points is preferable to one point, and the reason being is that with one point is only position, but with double points, you can then track the position, the scale, and the rotation. So if I just get this point and move it over here, then the red box is what we're going to track, and the green box is the area in which we should be searching for that track point. I'm going to drag this one over to the second green point over here. I'm going to make the box quite a bit bigger, actually. Same for this one, because I do have quite a bit of movement in here. And we're just going to hit this track forward button, and we're just going to let HitFilm do its job in tracking the movement of these. So HitFilm has hidden error here. If that ever happens, all you have to do is just reposition your tracks and press the track forward button again. One thing I should say is that if you can manually set shutter speed on your camera, then set it to be as high of a shutter speed as possible. That way you reduce motion blur and you get a better track. So I've only tracked 5 seconds of this, but I'm not really bothered uh, to go ahead and track any more of this. So what we need to do is simply press new layer now and create a point. And back in our, in our tracking panel, select the tracker, purpose transform, select the new point as your layer, hit rotation and scale, and just hit apply. And now if we go into our viewer, this point is moving around just like um, the video did uh, when we tracked it. It tracks around with that point. We're going to hide this video layer. We don't need it anymore. Or we can even delete it. As long as we've got this tracking data, then we're fine. Down here in our uh, video that we want to shake around, select the parent to be the new point. And now, we'll start moving around realistically, just like it did when we tracked it. And this is the exact movement that we had when we actually moved the camera and it's been applied to this video now. And also, click right here to uh, make sure that motion blur is turned on for a more realistic um, effect. Now you have to manually scale in to your video to make sure that the outer edges aren't seen. So that's it for today guys. I hope you enjoyed this video, hope this was useful to you, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Stay shiny. Bye.